Okay, good morning and welcome to Ian Tolina on the last Simon in the first Chayla Commission, Bura Kuf Kuf Zayin 127, discusses the, time, the concept of Modim de Rabbonon, Modim de Rabbonon, the Modim of the Rabbis. <clears throat> it's interesting, during Chazar Sashas, right, the Shleach Sibor bows down four times, like you do in your private shmona, that's right. However, we bow down, the Sibor only bows down once. Only once. <clears throat> Now, why? Why this once are they bowing down? Bill bowing down. The Ramah says he wants to remain bowed the entire bracha modem, the entire modem the Rabbana, until Barakel Ados. The Rashba says the beginning and the end you're supposed to be bowing down. The, the Gra says only in the beginning. Now, what is modem the Rabbana and why are we bowing down only here and not in the other place? So, I like to explain, as I explained before, the Chazar Shashas is a fundamentally different type of tefillah than the tefillah of Balakash. It's a tefillah of the rabbim. Now, what exactly what is tefillah of the rabbim? So I'm going to explain it based on the concept of modem. There's two explanations of the word modem. Modem means like the end of the bracha, hodah, to thank Hashem, thanksgiving. And modem also means to admit, to admit. Um, to admit, what do you admit? You're admitting that Hashem is great, Hashem is wonderful, Hashem is awesome. Now, in your private Shemona Esra, right, the bracha is hodah, you're thanking Hashem. The reason you bow down is because before you ask for your bakashos, you show that you're subservient to Hashem, you bow down. And after... You ask for your bakashas and you hope that Hashem will listen to you and you uh, beseech the rachamim of Hashem. So therefore you show your perseverance again and you bear down twice in the bracha of modem. In Chazar Sashas, right, the concept of Chazar Sashas, I think modem darabon, and it's called a different modem because it means something different in Chazar Sashas. Modem, in your Prophet Shemalash, it means thank you, but in your in the Tefillah of the Rabbim, it means modem. What do you, because there's no, there's, it's not a bakasha of the rabbin. That's not a feel of the rabbin, not a bakasha of the rabbin. It's like Barov Amadros Melech, right? When you have, or Nikdashi, but talking about Israel, Dvarim Shabdush, need 10 people. When there's a lot of people, the more people there are, the more glory is for Hashem. Modim is to admit that Hashem is great, to give glory to Hashem. That's the whole purpose of the of the rabbin. It's not a chiv on the yachid. When you have a tzibor, and the, the more people, the better. Barov Amadros Melech is better to give glory to Hashem. That's the whole purpose of the of the rabbin. Of Kriya Satoro, Valetzion, Tachman, all these things are giving glory to Hashem, as opposed to the personal Shema Yisrael, which is a personal bakasha that you're asking for your needs and wants from Hashem. So, at, so there you go. So there, the idea of Modim Rabbanan is to admit. It's a different meaning. Of admit. So the reason you're bowing down the Shliach Sibro over here is because, and it's different, right? The way you bow down normally um, is you first bow down your feet and then you bow down your back, but here you just bow down your your, your back, modem de Um, because again it's not you know when you bow down your whole body, I call it smosai tomarna. So that's really you know a submission to Hashem. When you just bow down your back, it's like you know when someone says hello, you go like that to them. You know you nod your head to them. It's acknowledgement, it's approval, acknowledgement of the person, and you're acknowledging Hashem. You're admitting to the glory of Hashem. That's the purpose of modem de Rabbanan. Now the reason it's called modem de Rabbanan. And I believe this is the reason that the Ramah says he's supposed to do it the entire time. is because the Rabbanon, I think, I believe, uh, either Rashi or Tosis, I heard this from Rashi Shi or Yaakov Freeman, that um, the purpose of Modim, Modim the Rabbanon, is Modim al Shanachnu Modim. We're thanking Hashem, it's a like Gomorrah maybe, we're thanking Hashem on the, on the ability we have to thank. So according to the Rabbanon, if you're a rabbi, now what makes you a rabbi? I discussed with my wife last night. What makes you, am I a rabbi or not a rabbi? So I decided I'm not a rabbi because um, people sometimes have been asking me recently questions like a rabbi. You know, like my cousin asked me, you know, why in Yom Kippur do we say, you know, the bracha of Slach Lanu and, and Maru after, after Yom Kippur? You just got Mechila. You know, people are asking me, give me advice on what to do with, in the venture capital field, you know, based on your shirim. And I'm like, you know, and the first time I was answering their questions, trying to give a one or two line answer, and finally I just said to my cousin, I'm like, listen, I'm not a rabbi. You got to get your own, go to your local Orthodox rabbi and ask these questions because what makes someone a rav or a rabbi is like it says in Parshas, in Parshas Korach, it says Rav Lachem Bnei Levi. That's where it says the word Rav. Rav is someone who's on a pedestal. He's greater than other people. Uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, you'll decide that for yourself. But it means you're Rav. It means you're big. You're great. And a rabbi tells other people what to do. That's what a rabbi does. He tells his job, or whether he consciously decides that or just happens that way, he's telling other people what to do. And other people are, are presumably asking his advice or listening to him, maybe a combination of both, maybe one or the other. 
So, you know, that's what a rabbi is. A rabbi is greater. He's on a pedestal. He tells you what to do. Normal people don't tell the people what to do. If you ask me for advice, you're, you're a friend or a family. I try to give you advice if you, if you feel confident in talking to me. It doesn't make a rabbi. A rabbi is someone about general questions, especially about Judaism. People are asking questions. They're going to give you advice. They're going to give you hadracha. They're going to try to tell you what to do. And yes, maybe it's, you get a little honor. You feel good when someone's asking what to do. I get to tell people what to do. Right? I am their master. I am their rav. Right? You're rav and an evid. Right? A rav in the Gemara talks about an evid. A slave has a rabbo. Rabbo is the person in charge of the slave. I have an evid. So in a certain respect, when you're a rabbi, people become subservient to the rabbi. They ask him his opinion, usually follow his opinion, or try to follow his opinion if it's possible. So, you know, that's what makes you a rabbi. The problem is there's a negative to that also, which I realize very clearly, is that it becomes a tremendous responsibility that if this person's seeking out your advice and wants your, to help make important decisions, first of all, it's hard to make decisions. They give you pretty hard questions, you know, not just... You know, what do you say, slach? Why do you say slach? I don't know. They'll start asking you personal questions about their marriage, about their finances, about raising their children, about health. You know, these are weighty questions that weigh on a person's mind. They're very difficult to deal with. And like Ms. Silas Hashem says, Kavod brings tircha, a lot of tircha, and not just responsibility to answer these questions, but you have to forge a relationship with that person. That person makes a wedding, you got to come to his wedding. He makes a brisket, you got to come to the wedding. Shalom Zachar, you got to come to Shalom Zachar. Right? Because I took that guy as my evid, I gotta treat him right. Right? You gotta treat he's an evid every, right? You have two pillows, right? You gotta you only have one pillow, you give the, the pillow to your evid every. He's a Jewish person, evid every, so you have to you have to treat him right. And you gotta treat him right. And the tremendous tircha weighs on your time, uh your energy. It, it really weighs down. And that's why I cho choose, I consciously choose not to be a rabbi. I don't want to be a rabbi. Whether I have the knowledge or not of a rabbi, probably. I mean, I probably have knowledge of, you know, greater than most rabbis in the world. But it doesn't make me a rabbi. It makes someone a rabbi. It's not smicha. I mean, the word smicha, it, it had connotations back when, you know, you know, people leaned on their hands on, like, Moshe Rabbeinu to Yoshua. But that was broken many years ago. They don't have smicha. We don't have a Sanhedrin anymore. Smicha means to lean on someone. And people lean on you for advice. That's really what it means. Are people leaning on you for advice and for, you know, words of chizuk and things like that and taking responsibility for their lives? If you want people to lean on you, you get smicha, you'll be a rabbi. You tell them, you, great, you get the honor, you tell them what to do. They'll ask you the question, they'll give you that honor, you get a kavod. But as the Mishra Shem says, it's not worth it. And the tircha, the responsibility, and the time consumption, the energy consumption that it takes for you is not worth it at all. That's why I'm not a rabbi. And you try to call me a rabbi, then I'll just call myself Reish Beis Lamed, Rav Ben Sion Lang, which if you... Translated into English defines me as the rebel, so <clears throat> you end up calling me a rebel. So if you think I'm, a, if you treat me as a rabbi, then I'll be a rebel because my opinions will be a little different than most rabbis. So I'll be, how can a rabbi say something like that? You know, if I'm a rebel, but I'm a regular person, just Ben C. Lang or Benny Lang, I'm just a regular person. So you know, no one has any problems with a Haredi person having not Das Torah, not exactly the same as Das Torah. If he's a regular person, he's a regular guy who has a regular job. He doesn't learn all day in Kolel. He's not a rabbi. So no one has a problem with that. I can be part of the Haredi community, the ultra Orthodox community. I just have different opinions than other people. It's when, you, when you're a rabbi and you have different opinions than the mainstream rabbonim, that's the problem. They'll call me a rebel. So if you want to treat me as a rabbi, I'm the rebel. But I'm not a rabbi. Don't treat me as a rebel. I am just... And, and getting back to Modem the Rabbanon, the reason I went off this, this whole tangent over here, Modem the Rabbanon is that the Rabbanon always have... They always have a knech. They get the Rabbanon have a knech. You know, they come with that, we thank you that you can thank. I mean, listen, it shouldn't be, your relationship with Hashem shouldn't be, we thank you that we can thank you. I mean, just saying thank you is enough. You don't have to go out of your way. That's like adding on, you know, putting yourself on a pedestal, right? I'm so lowly that I thank you that I can even thank you. I mean, you know, there's a song that they sing. I hate the song. Uh, I don't like the tune of the song, and I don't like the words of the song. Me, me Anochi. Me, me, Anochi. I can't even sing it straight. Asher, whatever. It's a song. Who am I to even go in front of Hashem to speak? What do you mean, who am I? Hashem said, Davin. I give you a mission to go, Davin. Just do it. You know, just do it. Just do it. It's not my Kindleach. Just do it. A Nike, just do it. You don't have to thank. Get so into your mind over here. It's a das. I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much. So if you're Modem Darabonim, 
And then you bow down for the whole thing because it's a, it's a bracha of a hoda of thanking and you should be, there's a, a it's you're part of uh, the entire bracha of the shaliach sibur, which is, there's a, bear, a bowing down at the beginning and at the end. So why is it different at the end of the beginning? But if you learn not modem the rabbanon means a different meaning, it means to admit, it's just part of the til de rabbim. Then you just down at the beginning, like admitting, you nod your head. And maybe according to this, you don't have to bow down the entire way. I personally don't actually bow down the entire way. I just go like that. More than the Rabban, and a lot of people will do that because you're just nodding approval that Hashem is glorious, Hashem is the great king, that he is Melech Machayam Lachim. And that's really what Modem is. If you treat as Modem the Rabban, and maybe like the Rabban, you should be bowing down the entire time, full way. If not, maybe just nod your head because that's really what it is. Hope you enjoyed today's share. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, Chelek Bez, we start a lot of Hilchos Brachos, Chelek Bez. And I'll tell you a story, a unique story that relates to Mesechus Nadarim. A nether I took after learning Mesechus Nadarim as a 21 year old kid in the mirror, Yeshiva. I learned the whole Nadarim. I made a great, crazy nether during the Ela of Yom Kippur following learning Mesechus Nadarim. It's related. The Chalik Bays of Shulchan Aruch. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned tomorrow. Chalik Bays coming up tomorrow.